So tell me about Malfini. What was the story of it? The story of Malfini was about um, three men who had, um, they, 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 they were very superstitious, mm -hmm. and, and they believed that they could do well if they would kill a little boy and, and, and um, get his heart and plant it in, in, in their property, and, um, and then the land would, would flourish and that sort of thing. And um, they, they were, they, so they killed this child. And they were now being tried. It was a surrealistic thing. Mm -hmm. They were being tried in purgatory. Right. So they were in purgatory mm -hmm. after this crime. Mm -hmm. And it was a trial. It was a really called the trial in purgatory. Mm -hmm. So what we, we, we witnessed um, was how they were um, being tried and, and their arguments and that sort of thing um, with one another. Hmm. Um, I, I, the trial in purgatory. So, so the other name for Malfini, which means um, bad ending, mm -hmm. um, was trial in purgatory. Hmm. So it was about the, the, what happened in, in the trial. Mm -hmm that they, 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 they justified certain things mm -hmm. and they, they argued for some certain things and, and say because that is what they know and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. it was just this sort of uh, surreal kind of thing. It, it was something which <laughs> wasn't based on, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was, actually, it was actually based upon something that happened apparently in, in, in Roderick's life mm -hmm. um, in his country, th that people are so superstitious. They believe, you know, um, in, in things that, that they can do to sort of be successful and things like like make a sacrifice. They think that if they sacrifice a child, mm -hmm. it would provide success in their business kind mm -hmm. of thing. So that is what it was about. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the trial sort of um, that followed mm -hmm. was showing how they justified mm -hmm. <laughs> themselves, right. themselves, you know. Now, getting the play up must have been a trial. Getting the play, oh, getting gosh. money for the yes. play. Oh, must yes. Oh, yes. Uh, so talk to me about that journey. The moment you decided, okay, Roderick, we're doing this play, what was, what was your next step? <laughs> the thing is, we had to use a lot of... Um, we only used three professional people, three equity members, which was Abbott Anderson, mm -hmm. Arden Bess, and I um, can't remember the other person. <laughs> but uh. but um, most of the other people were, were like the students we, we were teaching. Um, I think I remember Delroy Lindo was right. just a, a young student. He had just come from England mm -hmm. and, and had been in my workshop. And um, he was also given a small part in, in, wow. in, 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 in that Malfini. But um, the bulk of the, the whole company, the sport and actors, were just young people mm -hmm. that, without, you know, ever being on a stage and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of training had to take place while it was being produced, you know. Right. And Roderick was used to that. Right. He had done a lot of theater at home, right. community theater, right. amateur theater, as they would call it, and right. so on, you know, pantomimes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we had to get funding from, I think the, the Canada Council um, gave us sort of a seed funding or something like that, mm -hmm. very small amount, and um, we, got it, we got some from the Citizenship, Ministry of Citizenship, and uh, Metro Council, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we managed, we managed, because we're talking about paying people um, like $100 a week. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. and um, tickets were like, I think, $4 or $2, yeah, that's you know? That's amazing. So it, it, was, it, it was just done, I think, the grace of God, mm -hmm. more, more than anything else. Uh, and, and, it just happened. I, I, I worked like, like off. 
<laughs> it was terrible because you had to do so much. Yeah. You had to do so much work yeah. uh, to just get something done, you know. And we wanted to keep the level of excellence mm -hmm. um, within it. So, so we, we had to, to, to fulfill those criteria that the councils are looking for. Mm -hmm. So we had to, to deal with it from a professional point of view, you know. Were there challenges dealing with the councils? There were always challenges dealing with them because their, their criteria was based upon um, how much you have already done or how much you have raised on your own mm -hmm. without their help. <laughs> now it's our very first production. But so they're looking to see if, if we can raise money from the community just out of a clear blue sky. And it, it, they were insensitive, really, to what we were really doing. Mm -hmm. and, and not having, being the first of its kind, they really didn't know um, what, what we were capable of doing. Right. And they didn't really understand our whole purpose. Uh, of the whole organization, the whole, you know, and, and I think because of that, you didn't have people who um, were sensitive to, to what we might be doing. Mm -hmm. And as a first, you know, we couldn't prove. It's your first, so you can't prove. And um, that caused, caused them to sort of like just not trust us or, or whatever. I, I don't know <laughs> how they figure it out, but they were not sensitive. Mm. And, and they just gave you a small amount of money, which really um, was not enough. Use. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but we still managed. We, we, and, and what was really difficult is um, the place to do the things, the productions. Right. We, we had no building mm -hmm. of our own. That was really a, a severe handicap because we are searching and searching and searching and you need to rent somewhere. Mm -hmm. you, need a, you need a theater, auditorium, and, and there was no such place available. And the few companies that were around, there were quite a few companies then um, existing, Battle Street Theater, um, the, the, the Factory Lab mm -hmm. Theater, Mm -hmm. you know, st uh, Studio Lab and the other people. Mm -hmm. And we looked for a venue for, perform for, for doing these performances and couldn't find one. So we, we resorted to churches because at that time, many of the companies were using basements of churches. Right. And uh, so we found Bathurst Street Theatre. It had not been used as a theater yet, right. never. And um, it was the United Church, and we went, we spoke to the pastor, mm -hmm. and we asked him if we can use, because people had been using it for meetings and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. you, you could rent the part of the auditorium, part of the church for a meeting. You, you have a meeting, community, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he, he consented, I can't remember his name, he consented to let us um, use the place. He had no idea what we were going to do, what, what, you know, what was needed. Mm -hmm. So again, Roderick came and he sent his, um, some technical people uh, and, and so on, and we converted the church into a theater, and we were one of the first mm -hmm. people to really use the Bathurst Street Now Theater yes. as theater. Which is now the, the they use it as the Randolph Academy. That's and, right. And that's where that's you know, right. young people from all over the world that's right. are now being taught. So we pulled on all the musty um, drapes that they had there. I remember the smell of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and you know, uh, just uh, renovating the place uh, and make it um, mm -hmm. suitable. Yeah. Which is now, it's like now a very important venue in, yes. in the Toronto Theatre scene. Yes. And yeah. we did Malfini there, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how was it received? Greatly. Mm -hmm. It was well received. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it in winter. I remember February. Right. <laughs> yeah. Heart of winter. Yeah. 
but yet it, it was received very well. And I think it is because of the people that we used mm -hmm. um, who were not um, professional people. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they were very helpful in, in, in getting their parents and their parents' neighbors <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, yeah. to come, come to this thing because, you know, my little son is going to be in it and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was well received. Very well received. And so then after that, after, you know, getting that... Uh, yeah, the councils begin to lighten up a bit. Ah, did they? Okay. Yes. And um, Ontario Arts Council, um, you know, we, we wrote an application to them and, and they responded. And we could prepare for uh, uh, other productions. But they insisted that we had to do at least three major productions per year. Right. And it, that was not possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. So at that time, Jeff Henry, with his Theatre Fountainhead, it was called, yeah, Theatre yeah. Fountainhead, right. um, they also told Jeff the same thing. And, and because you're just starting, you know, you, you don't have the funds. Mm -hmm. You don't have a venue. You don't even have a, a place. You just have a little office. Mm -hmm. And um, he, so they suggested that the two companies join right. together, and if we can produce three major professional theater um, productions, we can get funding right. from the Canada Council. That was what they imposed upon us. Right. And, uh, so we did. He did, I think, um, Swamp Dwellers. Right. And we did. Uh, Staggerly, Valfany, and Layers, right. I think. And with, with Jeff's Swamp Dwellers, we were able to please the Canada Council right. criteria. Right. Uh, and, and they began funding us with a, little, with a little more. Were you ever placed on operating funding, like in yearly? No. Funding? No. Like a set amount every year? Y no. Mm -hmm. No. And we, we just rallied for that and never did it yet, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that's what held us I, I, in this awful, so insecure place. So you're just project by project. Project by project, project. project. yes. What, were, what, what did they say to you? Why, what did they say to you about not giving you operating funding? What, 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 what did they say? Um, it was the same, same thing they were using. Um, we don't do enough. We, you know, we don't do enough. And because we, we were doing so much else, that was not theater, mm -hmm. I think they held that against us. Mm -hmm. But it was important for us to have workshops, mm -hmm. to send out a newsletter li like these, mm -hmm. you know, um, these newsletters, mm -hmm. um, which, which um, it just informed the people um, about what's happening and gave them something to, to, to sort of mm -hmm. know that w we exist, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and to show that we, we, were, uh, we were interested in, in going in, in, to schools, mm -hmm. we were interested in, in getting the little children mm -hmm. oriented to black history, right. and uh, we had all these other um, sort of things to do. Yeah. They were insensitive to that, mm -hmm. and, and ma made us feel uh, on, on one, they made us feel, you know, that we were too to community oriented right and um, but but that was our, our intention you know